So you could have had named any card, but yeah. I actually placed one card in my back pocket earlier. You'll actually see, I've only got one card in there. Okay? You could have had any card out of a whole 52. Seven of hearts. Just had a oh. seven of hearts. I'm Ben Harris and um, with my new effect Crossroads just coming out in a few days I thought it was time we'd get together, have a bit of a chat. There's a lot more to Crossroads than you may believe. Um, it's not one trick, it's not two tricks, it's not a dozen tricks. It's an entire system, it's a way of looking at a deck of cards um, using principles that date back to the um, 19, late 1930s into the 40s. Um, it has a rich history, it's just never quite been put together in this manner before. Um, the basic, basic effect is that what appears to be a pre-selected card vanishes from a deck that you've never touched. This card can then be reproduced from your pocket, from your wallet, um, wherever you like, from a position that you specify before the effect begins, and that adds an extra dimension. Um, extra dimension. Um, something else that adds an extra dimension is the fact that the effect may be instantly repeated. After the first card vanishes from the deck, and let's say it appears in your wallet, you can, you can propose, well, hey, what would have happened if you had chosen another number? If you had chosen another suit, and then you do it again without touching the deck? A second number is chosen, a second suit is decided upon, bang! It's gone, again, from your wallet, your pocket, wherever you decide and announce beforehand. So as you can see, there are a, a, lot, a lot more layers to this. It, it's, uh, it cancels out at every step of the way. The fact that Equivoke is used at one spot means nothing. It's a wonderful technique to dismiss it because it is not new is ridiculous. As I say, Crossroads has elements that go back to the late 1930s, uh, built on the shoulders of giants. So much can be done with this. You need to actually look at Crossroads like you would look at a musical scale with separate notes. You can put them together in different ways. You can play majors, minor chords, diminished sevenths, whatever. Crossroads gives you a scale that you can play the way you want to play it. You can play it seriously, you can play it lightheartedly. Instead of making a card just vanish from the deck, here's another approach. The pack is taken, I will use the joker, Pack is taken, placed aside. You do not touch it again. You have the joker. A card is selected, and we use the crossroads process to do this, giving the illusion of a freely selected card. And if that illusion is strong enough, it may as well be a freely selected card. To the audience, it's the same thing. If they've had a chance to change their mind, to convince themselves it's a free choice. It is to all intents and purposes a free choice. Simple as that. Let us say a spectator chooses a number between one and 10, a six. Let us say another spectator is asked to decide upon a suit and he or she decides upon the clubs. So we add those together, six of the club. We have the joker. It's been out on the table since we have begun. The deck of cards has not been touched. The selection of card appears free. But watch very, very closely. And the magic is done, ladies and gentlemen. Apply it to mentalism. Don't even apply it to cards. The crossroads principle can be applied to calendar sets, months, star signs, it's absolutely endless. So I hope you explore Crossroads. Meet you then. Ciao.